Hey everyone, welcome back to the bench. Today we have the Kenwood TK730 back on the bench. And we are going to attempt to do a channel upgrade to it. This one is 32 channels. And we are going to try and do a 160 channel upgrade. So this is the official document for the KCH-5, which is the chip. It's an X24C16PI, and that is the part number that I have looked up for an equivalent replacement. And this will, as you can see here, it'll get us 160 channels, uh, the full featured one. So we need two of these. And I'll show you where they go. And here is the replacement that we're going to try out. Let's say 24LC16B, which is this one here, 400 kilohertz. Uh, everything you need to know about it's a serial EEPROM. Six pin, this package here. And this is exactly the same specifications as the original. I won't bore you with all the details, but this is the closest match available part in stock that I could find. And that's what we're going to try today. Okay. I already had the screws off of this. In preparation for this, uh, since I last did a video on this. So the chip that we are pulling out is this EEPROM right here. Sorry, it's an 8-pin. I said it's a uh, 6-pin before, but it's a uh, 8-pin uh, dip. So we're going to change this one, but we also have to change the one that's inside the control head. So we're going to have to remove that and access that one. So let's do that one first. Let's see, as we'll get everything taken apart that needs to be taken apart out of the way. Okay, so this is really easy. We don't even need to disconnect the cable. We'll just remove the chip, which is right here, right here, and here. As you can see, they're both matching chips. So let's give it a shot. Oh. I will remove the cable just because. Just because I said I didn't have to. That's why I'm going to do it. So I'm just going to gently work that up. Try to do it on either side so I don't bend the pins. This is a pretty small package, so it's uh, not really going to bend the pins. Um, I will remember that the... Uh, where's pin 1? Is the bottom here. And it is marked on the board with that little circle there. We'll get our package here from DigiKey. the old ones back in here there's a dot in the corner you see there that's pin one side we'll match that up focusing on my cracked skin hands 
All right, so the next step is we want to remove R33, which is this guy right here, R33. It's got a little box around it. So that's that guy there. So I'm not going to do anything magical here. Just put a little bit of Java flux in there. We'll just heat the whole thing. It starts flopping around. There we go. Spray some alcohol in there. Wipe up that goopy flux. And it looks like we were never there. I'll we'll just dry off that CPU. All right. So there's our 33 removed. This is the full display, which I have. Okay. back Let's put this back together while we're here Okay, so now for the main board. Just gently dry that up. Use a smaller one. Put that one back in the case. We'll install this one again with the dot facing the dot on the board. And there we go. Now we're going to move over here. And if you guessed it, we are going to remove our 156, which is also boxed in, made it nice and easy for us to find. So goop a little bit. Flux on there again. Way too much. And heat it up. And there you go. It's out with an IPA. Yeah. There we go, nice and clean, beautiful factory. on temporarily 
In case we have to go back in, this to do is what it did originally when I first powered this on. If, if you saw that video uh, when I was just getting this radio going, the screen was just flashing. And that is apparently what happens when there's nothing programmed into it, which I'm going to expect uh, the exact same thing is going to happen here. So let's tr plug this in, see what it does. Always, always good rule of thumb is to hook a dummy load up because sometimes when you plug in a program cable, it might force the radio into transmit. Okay. We plug in our homemade cable here. All right, so we've got uh, device manager open here and I can see USB COM port two, which is what I want. So we're gonna open up uh, see DOS box X. I like it a little bit better. Um, first of all, the radio needs to be off and you press the first button here which is squelch hold it down press power keep holding the squelch until it says program so now we're going to type in mount our drive c is going to be this folder on the local drive so now we go to drive c and the kpg folder which has KPG 7D. Now let's set up COM2. And let's see if we can read from the radio. So model type mismatch, uh, let's retry. Okay, so I'm gonna have to tell it, basically there's nothing to read in there. Let it fail again, okay, so cancel. So I'm gonna have to tell it that it's, so this is what it was before, a full 32. This is the full display as a big screen. The Basic is a uh, screen about that big, and then it has a big speaker here. But we have the full, and it's no longer a 32, it's a 160. Uh, it's a single control head, single band. Uh, we are VHF high, and we have wide, narrow option, uh, 150 to 174. It's either one of those two. Um, I'm going to hit no on the voice scrambler. Uh, okay, I don't care about all that, if it's cleared or not. Now, let's make a test frequency here. Put LAD1 in. Uh, it's a narrow. Yes, I want to scan. I don't know. And the channel name is LAD1. Okay. So let's try to write to the radio. Uh, before I do that, though, let me just reset it here. Okay, let's try it now. Oh, data empty. Let's reset on the radio to reset programming mode. 
Um, okay, let me figure out what the reset button is, because I don't know. Well, I just uh, reset the radio, put it back in programming mode, and hit retry, and now it's going. So <laughs> I didn't do anything special, and I didn't find any uh, anything in the service manual on how to reset it. The only thing in there is uh, how to put it in programming mode. So this is a good sign. Okay, so now let's try <laughs> It's not gonna let me I want to go uh, This is group two, so it's only allowed you to have 16 per group We get 10 groups Interesting. So we should have Lad 1 show up on the screen, and we do. That is great. So it worked. That's good to know. Okay, I went off, off camera and I programmed seven different groups worth of stuff here. As you can see, there are all kinds of things going on. So let's now try and see if it'll hold all of this information. I need to put it in program mode. There we go. See, it's starting in a much higher number and counting down the blocks. Excellent. Bring it a bit closer here. Now you can see. Got all these channels. We can go group up. 14 here. Now I can only go in banks of 16, which is annoying because these resource road ones, I have 35 of them. As you can see here. in this group so uh 35 but else we got a bunch of these ones here in this group and i've got a bunch of weather channels i don't have an antenna hooked up right now so you won't be able to hear these um yeah so we've easily got uh probably a good hundred channels in here right now and uh everything's working with those chips so that's really awesome um, I have a couple more of these radios that I'll throw those chips into as well and clean up and uh, put them back to use. Uh, there's a lot of off-road guys that love these things. That's why I program all the highway and off-road channels in. Um, so someone will put this radio back to use and uh, instead of it going to the scrap pile. So another one's saved, guys. Uh, if you like what you see, give me a thumbs up. Let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, I like to read the comments. And uh, we'll see you guys on the next one.